Well, for more on this, we can speak to Laurent Dibroc. He's the UN International Organization Migration Chief of Mission for Yemen. Uh, Laurent, thanks very much for joining us on TRT World. Now, uh, is this a trend that's happening now? Are we going to see more of these kind of incidents? Uh, and exactly what took place uh, off the coast of Yemen? I cannot say that actually it's a, it's a new trend. This exists for some time. It has been maybe too silent. Um, we have seen these kind of events happening for the last two years. It even reinforced with the state of war in Yemen because of the collapse of the state and the impossibility to actually counteract the, the smugglers. So we were facing last year more than 12,000 migrants coming every month to Yemen. This year it's a little bit lower, and, and we have seen and counted, unfortunately, dead bodies or people who disappeared uh, while trying to enter Yemen irregularly. Uh, uh, Laurent, just uh, uh, lay it out for us. These uh, migrants were attempting to get from Somalia and Ethiopia to Yemen. Of course, Yemen's in the grips of a civil war. So what is driving them to leave their home nations and go to a place like Yemen? Well, when we see them and meet, we meet them, and actually, first of all, they are quite young. And I'm not sure they are really aware of the situation in, in Yemen. And they are pushed by families or economic circumstances in their countries. And they are just looking ahead in reaching other countries to find jobs. Not knowing that Yemen is in a war state, um, they just get in and cross it. And it's even when we meet them at the shores and tell them that they enter into a country of war, they don't actually believe us. It's only after a few months they come back to us and they tell us that actually they want to go home. But in between those who enter the country and those who are coming to us, quite several of thousands disappear because of the war, because of whatever circumstances. We actually don't exactly know who many succeed to reach the, the Arabic Peninsula. Uh, uh, Laurent, uh, what's the actual legal status of these people? There are a number, I understand, who survived this instance. Are they refugees or migrants? Well, it would depend actually on the nationality. If they are from Somalia, they receive prima facie refugee status by the state of Yemen. If they are Ethiopians, they are considered as irregular migrants. And by status, they have to be evacuated or what the country would say, deported. Um, so if we arrive from a nationality to another, the main groups are from Ethiopia currently, very young people, uh, generally between 12 to 25, single male in majority, uh, women are accompanying, but also quite young in lower group, lower number. Um, so the status is basically yeah, migrant in an irregular situation. If they are from Somalia, they can be considered as refugee, refugees. Uh, and finally then, Laurence, there are, uh, as you say, a few people who did survive this horrific incident. What's going to happen to them now? Well, as an organization, we can offer them uh, support for the time they stay with us. And we inform them about the situation and the fact that it, they are in an irregular status in the country. They enter in country in a war, the danger they will face, and we offer them to return them back home. Um, as a Somali refugee, they can stay in the country and receive support, but also we will we warn them about the fact that the situation is a, is a war zone. Um, but they have a choice. We cannot force them actually to return. So some of them opt for return. Others are just willing to continue with the social pressure of the family, asking them to actually reach out other countries.